we are going to do the first read uh, for 136 to 137. Um, I'm going to share my screen. You should have this Google slide. It should be right above the video. Okay. So, but I'm going to go over it now. So as I'm reading 136 to 137, think about the key idea that you'll be answering at the top of 137 when I'm done. And of course it's in blue. What happens when Mr. Summers arrives with the black box? So follow along with me. So I'll leave that up so you can refer to it. So make sure you have your art books open, highlighter if you need it, pencil as well. Obviously, you can also mark with your pencil. You don't necessarily need a highlighter. So follow along, please. We start at 136. The lottery was conducted as were the square dances, the teenage club, the Halloween program by Mr. Summers, who had time, time and energy to devote to civic activities. He was a round faced jovial man, and he had he, he ran the coal business, and people were sorry for him because he had no children and his wife was a scold. When he arrived in the square carrying the black wooden box, there was a murmur of conversation among the villagers, and he waved and called. A little late today, folks. The postmaster, Mr. Graves, following him, carrying a three-legged stool, and the stool was put in the center of the square, and Mr. Summers set the black box down on it. The villagers kept their distance, leaving a space between themselves and the stool, and when Mr. Summers said, some of you fellows want to give me a hand? There was a hesitation before two men, Mr. Martin and his oldest son, Baxter, came forward to hold the box steady on the stool while Mr. Su Mr. Summers stirred up the papers inside it. The original paraphernalia for the lottery had been lost long ago, and the black box now resting on the stool had been put into use even before old man Warner, the oldest man in town, was born. Mr. Summers spoke frequently to the villagers about making a new box but no one liked to upset even as much tradition as was represented by the black box. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, there was a story that the present box had been made into some pieces of the box that had preceded it. The one that had been constructed when the first people settled down to make a village here. Every year after the lottery, Mr. Summers began talking again about a new box, but every year the subject was allowed to fade off without anything being done. The black box grew shabbier each year, by now, it was no longer completely black, but splintered ba badly along one side to show the original wood color, and in some places, faded or stained. Mr. Martin and his eldest son, Baxter, held the box securely on the stool, while Mr. Summers had stirred the papers thoroughly with his hand. Because so, so much of the ritual had been forgotten or discarded, Mr. Summers had been successful in having slips of paper substituted for the chips of wood that had been used for generations. Chips of wood, Mr. Summers had argued, had been all very well when the village was tiny. But now that the population was more than 300 and likely to keep on growing, it was necessary to use something that would fit more easily into the black box. The night before the lottery, Mr. Summers and Mr. Graves made up the slips of paper and put them in the box. And it was then taken to the safe of Mr. Cole's Summers Coal Company and locked up until Mr. Summers was ready to take it to the square next morning. The rest of the year, the box was put away sometimes one place, sometimes another. It had spent one year in Mr. Graves' barn and another year underfoot in the post office. And sometimes it was set on the shelf in the Martin grocery and left there. Okay, so now at this point, please, and make sure you use punctuation at the end of your sentence, uh, write down what happens when Mr. Summers arrives with the black box. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop my 